recording is now. Welcome everyone again to the second part of the uh, Masia Paranal uh, user workshop, part three on phase two. And so the next talk will be by Monica at Godsense about OSPAD and how to interactively plan with the observations. Thank you. So yeah, hello, my name is Monika petro -Gotsens. Uh I'm a member of the ESO user support department and I will present the OSPAD tool. So this is, as the name says, a tool to help you, the observers, um, to prepare your observations. So OpsPrep is in fact fully integrated in P2, the web tool that was explained by Giacomo and which is for creating the observation blocks. So here you see a screenshot of P2 indicating where you can find the OpsPrep tab. And uh, the, the arrow here shall indicate um, that OpsPrep works on individual OBs or more precise uh, OpsPrep reads from the templates and writes to the templates and the target step of an individual OB. So the general idea behind developing ops prep is that ESO wants to offer one single tool for all ESO instruments integrated into P2 in order to avoid downloading and installing instrument-specific preparation software. So in this way, users experience the same look and feel and behavior of definitions no matter which ESO instrument you are using. And this obviously shall make the OB preparation much, much easier. So a big plus of integrating the tool in P2 is of course also that uh, OB parameters uh, can be automatically transferred. And I'll now demonstrate um, the OpsPrep tool in detail. So let's start with the basics. Uh, first, you need to select uh, an OB and that OB must have at least an acquisition template um, attached. Um, be reminded that um, the acquisition template very often also indicates um, or defines the instrument mode, and the instrument mode was already indicated in your phase one proposal. And as mentioned before by my colleagues, I mean, you are not allowed to change um, the instrument setup between phase one and phase two. Okay, so um, then uh, once you have selected your OB and attached an acquisition template, you click here on the OpsRap tab. And on the right, it shows uh, an image centered on the target coordinates and overplotting the field of view uh, for the instrument and the instrument mode. And this is information that OpsRap has grabbed from the acquisition template. And on the left, um, you will find a number of tabs that you can use sequentially to prepare step by step uh, your observations. And each tab has also an associated help or info box. So I will now go through the OpsFrap tabs one by one, and I'm using MuseOB as an example. So first we have the pointing tab. And uh, this allows you um, to fine tune the field of uh, view position on the sky. You can use the symbols here to, to drag and drop um, the field of view. You can also click somewhere um, on the image in order to select um, the target position. You can also use this sliding bar to change the position angle of your, of your field of view, or you simply enter the value of the position angle here in, the, in this box. Um, for spectroscopy, OpsPrep will indicate the chosen slit on the target in the sky view. And once again, you can change the position angle of the slit or indicate here that you use, uh, want to use a parallactic angle. Um, then the background image um, that uh, OpsPrep uh, uses as a default um, was defined by us and is uh, related to the instrument and the instrument mode, but you can change it, that's possible. I mean, and that's often very useful actually. So for this, for changing the background image, you click on the picture item and you can change it to um, a Gaia mockup image, or you can uh, upload um, your own FITS file um, which has make sure that it has uh, correct coordinates, VCS system. Um, but you can also choose uh, as a background image uh, ESO fully reduced phase three archive images 
um, that are available for that position in the sky. And you will be um, provided with a list of uh, ISO archive images that uh, would fulfill um, this um, or will, would, would be available at this position. Okay, then um, the next tab is the um, Adaptive Optic Star tab. I mean, here OpsPrep will show you on the sky image all the stars that are available, that are suitable to be uh, used as Adaptive Optics Guide Star, or here in case of, uh, of Muse, it's, it's a tip tilt star. Um, OpsPrep will take care of only displaying, showing you those stars that are in the correct magnitude range and radius range um, for this instrument mode. Um, you, you click, simply click on the star if you want to, to select it. I mean, in this case, I mean, there is only one possible guide star that's because, uh, a possible AO star, that's why just one is chosen. You click on it and then the coordinates are displayed here <clears throat> in the left part of, of the OpsPrep um, view window, window together with the magnitude. Um, similarly, you can, uh, OpsPrep will um, show you a number of possible um, blind offset stars. I mean, indicated here in green, these are all um, suitable as blind offset stars. Um, once again, um, OpsPrep will take care of um, showing to you only the ones that are uh, suitable for the instrument and instrument mode. Um, and um, if you click on on them, on the one that you want, I mean, automatically, um, not only the co coordinates of that uh, blind offset star, but also the blind offset uh, in RA and in DEC um, are calculated by the tool and, of course, also transferred back to the OB. Um, then the next step is the science observing offset tab, which is particularly useful if you want to do um, a field um, imaging uh, mosaicing of a, of a larger field. Um, here you indicate um, the, the offsets of the different, uh, different fields by either um, typing in the RA and DEC offset in this list um, or you click using uh, no, not using. I mean, just you simply click on the on the sky view, and then the associated offsets are calculated by OpsPrep and inserted in the list. Um, so, what uh, another um, um, uh, feature of OpsPrep is that OpsPrep also checks if um, one of the offsets uh, or all of them. Um, will result in a problem. For example, here the, off the second offset has a problem with the tip tilt star. I mean, it would, would be covered. And um, this will be then indicated by such an exclamation mark. And when you hover over it, then um, OpsRep will tell you, okay, there is an error. Um, this tip tilt star will not be reachable um, when you apply this off offset. Please um, really take uh, take those errors and warnings uh, serious because um, OpsPrep will not um, not uh, avoid of sending actually these these offsets to the um, to the OB science templates so if you see something like this please um, change the offset or either or the tip tilt stuff um, then the last um, tab is the VAT Guide Star tab. Once again, um, uh, OpsRep tells you, I mean, which uh, VAT Guide Stars are possible, suitable. Here they are indicated in this cyan, cyan color. Um, you can uh, choose them in order to check also if the guide probe uh, itself, the shadow of the guide probe, which is indicated here by this shape, is not covering your field of view. Um, you could, using this uh, position um, down, um, drop down, also change the, um, the position angle of, of the guide probe itself, and this way maybe avoiding that it covers uh, your field of view. Um, again, the coordinates are uh, noted down by OpsRep and then sent to the, um, to the OB parameters here. Um, I will show you very briefly, I mean, what was transferred to the OB automatically without the users doing anything. I mean, you can see here that the, the offsets for the blind offsets are um, inserted in the te acquisition template parameters. 
Then the guide star coordinates uh, were transferred to the tilt star coordinates, as well as the magnitude of the tip tilt star were also transferred. So it's a very, very um, useful tool and which makes your life much easier. And it's, yeah. Um, so the instruments that are currently supported um, by OPSPREP um, are listed here. I mean, they are either partly or fully supported in all modes. Um, we are continuously um, evolving uh, OPSPREP and adding instruments one after the other. Um, we are, have also plans to add a force to and transferring even the whole FIMS um, standalone tool um, into OPSPREP. And of course, we are also taking care of any future um, VAT instruments that are coming to the telescope, which by now have must, must uh, already be implemented in OPSPREP. Good, so that was it. I hope um, I have made you, um, uh, I, I could make you excited about the tool and using it for your observation preparation. And I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Monica. So I see uh, a raised hand from John. Hi, Monica. Is it necessary to specify a VLT guide star all the time? No. I mean, so for many instruments, it's um, it's not mandatory to to select the VLT guide star. Not at this moment. I mean, there are plans in the operations. Uh, um, on Paranal, that that might become in the future um, mandatory for every instrument, um, but at this moment it's not necessary. And and actually I have a, another another thought which is not related to the VLT guide star, but by by John making a comment. Um, so what I said about choosing your own um, image as a background or changing um, the images. Uh, um, from the default background, OpsPrep will also use those user-provided background images um, when making the automatically making the uh, finding charts for the OB. Could it's one question from Giacomo Venturi. Yeah, hello. Related to um, the previous question, so how important is to define a reference star, which is uh, optional. So uh, let's say I want to simply observe uh, the, the center of a galaxy multiple times. So, so I don't care if the precision is, uh, I don't know, less than one arc second. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it will simply change a bit the coverage of the external parts of the field of view, right? Um, since then, uh, in the pipeline, uh, the I'm, I'm talking about MUSE in this case. Mm -hmm. Uh, since then, in the pipeline, the combination is done by aligning uh, all the exposure frames uh, by using, uh, let's say, point-like sources in the field of view. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I know, I mean, for Muse, I mean, the, the pointing to have always the same pointing if you want to stack um, different images. Um, it makes a difference in the image quality, in the final stacked image quality. So using the same VLT guide star in all your OBs would make a lot of sense for Muse, certainly. Even though, I mean, the pipeline um, does do the alignment, I, I think it's easier if you use always the same VLT guide star because uh, the, um, the pointing is more precisely recovered, so to say. Mm -hmm. There is another question from Stuart in the chat, asking if is it possible to specify absolute offsets in OPSPREP rather than relative offset as currently used in PEPI2. And he says that he finds that absolute offsets are easier for the user to interpret. Um, so OPSPREP, follows the definition as um, as it's defined in the in the um, in the instruments templates and as far as I know I mean we do not have any instrument that uses um, absolute offset 
definition for the observing offsets. So an offspread follows that definition as it is in the template. Thank you again, Monica. Presentations. If there are no other further questions, we can move to the next talk. <laughs>